filming with the new camera. Now it's time to turn on the lights. I think that... Okay, that is insanely bright. Hold on, my new ultimate vlogging kit has come with some colored lenses that I can put on top of this mess. Oh yeah, I like that. So as I fiddle with this, how y'all doing? Oh, wait, that doesn't even look like it's making a difference. I turned the light away and now... Light. No light. Light. Mega light. What about this one? Okay, that's doable. How you guys doing? It's me, your girl, your Casey. What is up, buttercups? So, I'm filming on my camera. My phone camera. My new phone. And I'm ecstatic. Except, now I don't really know. Is that the camera lens? Where's the camera lens? I don't know where to look anymore. There you are. Okay, so the Christmas season has just ended and I'm willing to bet that some of you out there have received some books for Christmas, hmm? I did not because my family ardently believes that I have enough books. They are wrong. I mean, I do have a great many to read on my shelves, but some more doesn't hurt. So I went out and I bought my own Christmas gifts for myself. I bought three books. So what am I hauling for you guys today? I have me, of course, a thriller. But I got on clearance. The other two weren't on clearance. Cost me a pretty penny, but I am worth it. Got me a nice little contemporary that I heard lots of people say nothing but good things about from an author I already know and has made me cry many, many times. And I also got me a very popular self-published book. So without further ado, let's just dive right into this jazz. The first book with a very sinister looking cover is I Know Who You Are by Alice Finney. I knew a guy named Alex Finney, so I was like, Alex? Dang boy! Look at this cover. Look at this typical thriller angst. You know there are about to be secrets unveiled behind these shadows. Meet Amy Sinclair. Amy spelled A-I-M-E-E because -E, she bougie like that. Amy Sinclair, the actress everyone thinks they know but can't remember how. Mmm, is this some Addie LaRue thing where people think they like the opposite of Addie LaRue where you think you remember someone. Addie LaRue is like, who are you again? After you like met someone five times already. The actress everyone thinks they know but can't remember how, except one person. Someone knows Amy very well. They know who she is and they know what she did. When Amy comes home and discovers her husband is missing, she doesn't seem to know what to do or how to act. The police think she's hiding something and they're right, she is. But perhaps not what they thought. Amy has a secret she's never shared, and yet she suspects that someone knows. As she struggles to keep her career and sanity intact, her past comes back to haunt her in ways more dangerous than she could ever imagine. Oh, so we got this chick. She has a brooding secret past, probably had to kill someone to get her actress spot. That's just what I'm thinking right now. And she's been accused of some other crime, and the police are going to dig up the past crime, and our girl Amy's going to have to prove she's innocent from one crime, but hide that she's actually guilty of another crime. Mm. Is this a morally gray character we are approaching? Because I'm down for that jazz. Ooh, New York Times best-selling author of Sometimes I Lie. That sounds really familiar. The next book I have is a Frederick Bachman book. Frederick Bachman has made me cry. I've only read one book. It was super short, like 50 pages, probably less than that. Let's see if Okay, I heard someone open the garage door, which was over there, and it made like a little rumbly sound. So I thought my bookshelf was about to come crashing down on my head. I would have caught the end of Casey live on camera. None of y'all would have seen it though, because I wouldn't have been alive to edit and posted it. My ghost would have had to done that. Anyways, I'm fine. Anyways, Frederick Bachman, he makes me cry. So I picked up this book and I'm like, okay, man, I'm not in the mood to cry. Like, please do pull some heartstrings, but don't make me weep, please. I have anxious people. Frederick Bachman, as already established. I had no idea what this book was about before I picked it up. And we're in for a long summary, so buckle up, buttercup. Looking at real estate isn't usually a life or death situation. That is a downright lie. My mama is a real estate agent. She's had some weird stuff happen to her. We just gonna have to put this book down for a second because this is kind of hilarious. So my mom, when she's like touring a house before she like sets it up for an open house, she takes my big strong dad along with her to like, you know, some protection while she's alone in a big empty house. And so they're just walking around the house. Everything looks great. But then they decide to go check up in the attic for like water damage or stuff like that. See if it's insulated well. And so my mom, she's down in the garage like holding the ladder and my dad's like, up in the attic and from the bottom of the ladder my mom yells up mike 
Mop, don't you step off those beams now. You step off those beams, you're gonna fall right through the ceiling. Because if any of you have been up in the attic, you know, you step on that stuff in between the beams. It ain't solid, well, it is solid, but it's like styrofoam. You're gonna go crashing through that plaster and paint. However, my dad, he's, he's smart. He's built houses, he knows this. He just happened to slip. It was very dark up there. So like the moment she says that, he goes crashing through the ceiling, conveniently right on top of my mama. My dad relaying this event to me, he said that was the slowest fall of his life. He was going through the plaster and he was already like planning the fall. He was like, okay, I'm gonna land Land on my, I'm gonna land my feet, knees bent, and I'm gonna roll over myself and just tumble onto the ground. Break the momentum, stuff like that. However, he didn't know my mom was directly under the spot he fell through. So he landed on my squishy mommy, flattened her into the concrete. He flattened a bit too. I wish I was there, I would have been laughing. But anyways, yeah, they're hurt, rolling around on the concrete floor at the garage. And my daddy's just like, ugh, oh, checking himself for like cuts and stuff because there's nails up in the attic. And then over his own groans of pain, he hears my mom's stuttering voice. Mike, Mike. My dad goes, yeah, you hurt me. <laughs> so real estate is life and death. Continuing on to Frederick Bachman. Looking at real estate isn't usually a life or death situation, but an apartment open house becomes just that when a failed bank robber bursts in and takes a group of strangers hostage. The captain, the captains, this ain't no boat. The captives include a recently retired couple who relentlessly hunt down fixer uppers to avoid the painful truth that they can't fix up their own marriage. Yikes, that's deep for a little summary. I feel bad for these people. They'll work it out though. They'll work it out. There's a wealthy banker who has been too busy making money to care about anything else and a young couple who are about to have their first child but can't seem to agree on anything from where they want to live to how they met in the first place. Ooh. That's juicy. Mm. Add to the mix an 87 year old woman who has lived long enough not to be afraid of someone waving a gun in her face. A flustered but still ready to make a deal real estate agent. Is he gonna be like, hey Mr. Roberts, I know this is terribly inconvenient to ask you this, but are you guys interested in this modest two bedroom apartment? And a mystery man who has locked himself in the apartment's only bathroom. That is me at parties. And you've got the worst group of hostages in the world. Oh, this sounds funny. I, I'm excited for this mess. And look at me, I can just rotate stuff. This was the best Christmas gift ever. As I continue talking, you must deal with the stares from my pet llama up there. Each of these carries a lifetime of grievances, hurts, secrets, and passions that are ready to boil over. None of them is entirely who they appear to be. And all of them, the bank robber included, desperately crave some sort of rescue. As the authorities and the media surround the premises, these reluctant allies will reveal surprising truths about themselves and set in motion a chain of events so unexpected that even they can hardly explain what happens next. I foresee this as going from a robbery hostage situation to like becoming an AA meeting where we're all in a circle and we just go around telling each other our stories. That's just what's going to happen. And lastly, we have a book I know nothing about because I've watched no reviews for it. Because I typically don't watch book reviews for books I actually want to read. Don't want anyone's opinions muddling me on. However, I have still heard through the bookish grapevine that this self-published book is amazing. There be a dragon on the cover, so I am hooked. And that will be The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. Intense, inventive, and action-packed. And it is indeed lacking a proper summary. It's only like a couple sentences, so let's squeeze as much summary as we can out of this. A world caught in an eternal war. One young man will become his people's only hope for survival. That's it. Huh. Well, it's got dragons on it. Let's see what the first line says. Queen Typha stood at the bow of Targon, her beached warship, and looked out at the massacre on the sands. We got a bloody beach, y'all. It's hype. That's just the prologue, though. Mm -hmm. Give me more. Tissery stared at the incomplete maps laid out on the command tent's only table. Okay, all this book's telling me that we are really at war. I can't look up a better summary for this because my phone is busy recording this jazz. Reveal more of your secrets book. I do know the sequel for this book came up. Uh, Fires of Vengeance, hopefully that's what it's called. And the people be loving it, it'd be popping. And I am behind the times and the hype, so I need to get on this immediately. So all you dudes, this is what I have for my haul. We got some terror, some thriller, some dragons. Pretty bad summary. Seriously, why do books do this? You know what's even worse? Books that don't even have a summary on the back. It's just like, we don't even know. We didn't read this. We just published it. You got figured it out for yourself. Then we have bank robbery turned wrong. All in all, pretty solid, okay? Gotta post for that thumbnail. Hmm, it's like a fan. Sexy fan. Now I'm out of here, guys, to get reading, so you know the drill. Stay reading, my friends.